Hey guys, welcome back to this game development series where we are creating a 2D mobile game using Flutter and Flame Engine. In the last video, I walked you through the initial setup required to start using Flame Engine. And by the end of that video, we were able to display this dino sprite on the screen. Basically, we just created an instance of base game class. Then we created an instance of sprite component using the dino gif. And finally, we changed the position of this sprite component and added it to the base game's component list using add method. So now, in this video, we will first see how to create animated sprites. And then we will see how to create a moving background. For the sprite animation, we have already added a sprite sheet for the dino character. But for the background, we need some more assets. So I'll open up the assets slash images folder. And here I'll copy and paste this jungle asset pack.zip. This asset pack is free to use and I have downloaded it from itch.io. You can find the link to this zip in description below. Now let's extract this zip here. Once that is done, I'll delete the original zip. Inside this extracted folder, you'll find a subfolder named parallax background. And inside this, there are 5 images. When these images are stacked on one another, will create a background for our game world. The way any 2D parallax effect works is, you have multiple layers of images, and the objects that are roughly at the same distance from the camera are put on the same layer. So when these layers are moved at different speeds, it creates a parallax effect. So let's just copy these images and paste them in a folder named parallax under assets slash images. Many times, such parallax assets include a separate layer for ground as well. But as this one does not provide it, we'll need to get an image for ground. For that, let's go inside the extracted folder again. Here, you'll find an image called jungle tileset.png. If you open this image, you can see that it contains multiple sections and variations of ground. But we only need the one located at bottom left corner. And to make the coding part easier, I have already cropped out this part of the image and saved it. So I'll be using this cropped image for ground. If you want, you can crop it on your own or just download the one I have pushed to the GitHub repository. Now let's just move this ground.png to parallax folder and rename it to plx-6.png. And these are all the images that we'll need in this video. Now let's go to the pubspec yaml and add the parallax folder in asset section. And since we have added some new assets. I'll have to stop and relaunch the app. Okay, the app is up and running again. So now let's first create our own game class instead of using an instance of the base game class. For this, I'll first create a new folder under lib called game. And in this folder, I'll create a new file called game.dart. In this file, I'll create a new class called dino game, which will extend base game. For base game, We'll have to import base game dot dart. So in the last video, we created an instance of sprite component to represent our main character. But sprites can only display static images. And that is the reason why even when we used a GIF as input to sprite component, it still displayed a static image. So to create character animations in 2D games, we generally use a bunch of images or sprites of that character. And each sprite has minor changes to the appearance of the character. The idea is to loop through the images continuously to create a sense of animation, just like a flipbook. And to create animations in Flame Engine, we have animation component. So I'll create a variable of type animation component named underscore dino. For animation component, you'll have to include animation underscore component dot dart. This variable will hold and manage all the animations for dino. Now to initialize this animation component, I'll define the constructor of dino game class. Inside this constructor, we will initialize our game world. So to create an animation component, we can use animation component dot sequenced name constructor. If you have an image made up of multiple rows of sprites with each row containing sprites of only a specific action, then you can use this constructor. Like if you have an image which contains two rows of sprites, and let's say row 1 is only for walk animation and row 2 is only for run animation. Then in that case, you can use this one. 
but this is not true for our case because if you see the sprite sheet that we have got you'll notice that it contains sprites for all the different actions in a single row so instead of using dot sequence i'll use animation component dot empty named constructor this will create an empty animation component and before we forget let's add this animation component to the components list of our game using the add method so as i said our sprite sheet contains all the animations in a single row. This means we'll have to create all the required animations from that sprite sheet by picking a start sprite and an end sprite. And to read a sprite sheet, Flame Engine provides us a sprite sheet class. To use this class, you'll have to import sprite sheet.dart. As you can see, sprite sheet needs a few parameters for its construction. Let's take a look at them one by one. First one is image name. So here I'll specify the name of our sprite sheet, which is dino sprite tardpng Next, we have the texture width and texture height. These are the width and height values of single sprite from the sprite sheet. For example, in our case, the dimensions of sprite sheet are 576 by 24 pixels. 576 is the width and 24 is the height of the whole image. As this is a single row image, texture height will be the same as height of this image, which is 24. But for calculating texture width, we'll have to see how many sprites are there in this single row. And then we'll have to divide the total width by number of sprites per row. In this case, there are 24 sprites. So 576 divided by 24 turns out to be 24, which means texture width is 24. Basically, all the sprites are square in this sprite sheet. So let's set the texture width and texture height as 24 here. Next, we have the number of columns and number of rows. As I said, there are 24 sprites in a single row. So columns will be 24 and row will be 1. And let's store this sprite sheet in a final variable called sprite sheet. Now that we have this sprite sheet, we can call create animation method on it to create an animation. If you check the code for this method, you'll find that along with row number, we can pass in to and from to this method to control which sprites it uses for creating the animation. So if you look at the dino sprite again, you can see that first four sprites are for idle animation. An animation for run starts from fifth sprite. For our reference, I'll put the start and end sprite numbers for each animation as comments here. Now let's create the animation. First parameter is row number, which in our case will be 0 because we only have a single row. Next, for from, I'll set 0 and for to, I'll set 3. And finally, let's set the step time to 0.1. This is the time in seconds for which each frame of this animation will be displayed on screen. There is one more parameter to specify if the animation should keep looping or should it stop after playing once. As we need it to be looping, which is the default value anyways, I'll not set it explicitly. Let's store this animation in a final variable called idle animation. And now we can set this idle animation as animation property of dino. Let me bring up the emulator so that we can see this animation in action. And before performing hot restart, we'll have to change the code written in main.dart. So here, base game will now become dino game. And now we can remove this code that we wrote for creating and adding sprite component. All this now happens inside constructor of dino game. Let's remove these unused imports as well. Now let's hot restart to see the changes and we get nothing on the screen. This is because I forgot to set the width and height of the animation component. So I'll set both of them to 80 for now. And now if I hot restart the game, we'll see that dino with idle animation. But we want the dino to be running. So let's just duplicate this idle animation, rename it to run animation and change its from and to values, which are 4 and 10 respectively. Now, instead of setting dino animation to idle animation, we can set it to run animation. And on hot restarting the game, you can see that it now displays the run animation. And similar to what we did in last video,
we can change the position of dyno by changing its x and y values. Ok, now let's start working on the parallax background. For parallax background, Flame Engine provides a parallax component. So let's add a variable of type parallax component in dyno game. And similar to animation component, we'll have to initialize this variable in dyno games constructor. So after creating the dyno animation component, let's create a new parallax component. If you check the constructor of parallax component, you'll find it needs a list of parallax image. So here I'll create a list. And inside this list, I'll add a parallax image. Now if you check the constructor of parallax image, you'll find that it needs the file name of an image. It also has some additional properties, but their default values are good enough for now. So I'll set the file name as the name of first layer of this parallax background. And as all the images of parallax background are under parallax folder, I'll have to specify the folder name as well. Now before we add all the other layers, let me show you how it will look if we just add a single layer. For this, I'll add this parallax component to components list using add method. Now if I do a hot restart, you can see that the screen is filled with first layer. Now let's go ahead and add the second layer. For this, I'll just duplicate this line and change plx1 to plx2. Now if I do a hot restart again, we'll get the second layer on top of the first layer. So the whole point here is that the parallax image that you add first is considered as the farthest layer in the game world. Now I'll quickly add all the six layers and do a hot restart. As you can see, it now looks messed up. This is because the dimension of last layer, which is the ground layer, is not the same as all the other layers. So to fix this, we'll have to modify a property of last layer. By default, fill property of parallax image is set to layer fill dot height, which means it tries to fill up all the available space vertically. So I'll just set this fill property to layer fill dot none, and that's it. Now all the layers are placed perfectly, but we are not done yet. We still have to make this a moving background. So to do that, we just have to set the base speed and layer delta properties of this parallax component appropriately. Both these properties are basically offsets. So I'll set base speed as an offset of 100,0, where 100 is speed along x direction and 0 is speed along y direction. And let's hot restart to see the change. And as you can see, now the background is moving from right to left. And the background images keep on repeating. But right now, all the layers are moving at the same speed. So technically, there is no parallax effect yet. And exactly for that, we have the layer delta property. This property specifies the difference between two consecutive layers. So I'll set this to 20, 0. This means the speed of each layer will be decreased by 20 from previous layer. And now, if I hot restart the game, you can see that all the layers are moving with different speeds creating a nice parallax effect. But you might have noticed, now we don't see the dino sprite. And this is because we added animation component to components list first and then we added parallax component. This causes parallax component to get rendered on top of animation component. So if I just move the add dino call after add parallax component, we would see the dino animation. For this, we'll again have to do a hot restart. Ok, so now we can see the dino animation again, but right now it is floating in mid-air. So let's try to fix this. But before that, I'll quickly add a to-do note for moving all the code related to dino in a separate dino class. Ok, so now to set the dino at correct position, I'll override the resize method. This method comes from base game class. Resize gets called automatically whenever the screen size changes. Additionally, it also gets called before the game starts rendering. So this is the perfect place to perform any kind of resizing and repositioning of sprites. In this method, if I print size to debug console and hot restart the game, you can see that it prints current width and height of the screen. Using these values, we can dynamically change the size of our dyno so that it looks same on all different types of screens. So let's remove this debug print statement and set the width and height of dyno to one tenth of current width of screen. 
And now we don't need to set the width and height of dyno in the constructor. Next, let's set the distance of dyno from left of the screen. For this, I'll set dyno.x to dyno.width. If you want, you can add a multiplication factor to this, like 2 or 1.5. Next, let's set the distance of dyno from top of the screen. For this, let's first open up the image of ground. Here, you can see that dimensions of this image are 160 by 32 pixel, which means height of this ground is 32. So in game.dart, I'll create a new const double named ground height and set it to 32. And now in the resize method, I can set the y coordinate of dyno to size dot height minus ground height but as you can see this puts the dyno below the ground this is happening because when you change x and y coordinate of any sprite it puts the top left corner of that sprite at those coordinates so in this case we will also have to subtract the height of dyno from size dot height now if i save this you can see that now it is again a little above the ground and this is happening because there are some empty pixels both above and below the dyno sprite. I've already measured them and both add up to 10 pixels. So we'll have to add this value while calculating y coordinate of dyno. And as you can see, now the dyno is perfectly on the ground. To make things maintainable, I'll create one more const double called dyno top bottom spacing and set its value to 10. Now we can use this instead of hard coding the value in resize method. And while we are at it, let's create a constant for scaling of dyno. I'll call this one as number of tiles along width. Because by dividing by 10, we are essentially saying that we want size of dyno to be such that we could fit exactly 10 dynos along the width of the screen. And that is all for this video. We now have a working parallax background and dyno animation. I hope you were able to follow along and enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comment section below. To get the latest code for this project, check the GitHub repository linked in the description. All that being said, if you liked the video, do hit that like button and consider subscribing for more such content. I hope to see you in the next one.